And at the beginning of Luke 10, Jesus has sent out 70 followers in pairs to go to all the places that he's going to visit, that he plans to go. So our passage starts out as those 70 people are coming back. So Luke 10, verses 17 to 24. The 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name, even the demons submit to us. He said to them, I watch Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the Spirit submits to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. At that same hour, Jesus rejoiced in the Holy Spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to, the, them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows who the Son is except the Father, or who the Father is except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Then returning to the disciples, Jesus said to them privately, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. For I tell you that pr many prophets and kings desired to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. So um, we have been going through uh, the story of Exodus, of Moses, um, in our um, scripture passages and looking at what the fruits of the Spirit mean. And so this moment of joy and of bursting forth that happens um, out of a very painful, um, laborious, <laughs> exhausted place for Moses when God bless father-in-laws. And this is, you know, counter to all of the terrible in-law stories you hear. This is one where the in-law got and came right when he was needed and took care of his son-in-law and helped him to set up a different structure that would bring joy and freedom um, to the work that needed to be done instead of feeling overwhelmed and shut down and burnt out. Is that anything that we need now? No, not at all, right? Nobody feels burnt out or shut down or that that's too much work. And so we celebrate today that we are a part of a global village, that there are so many in our lives who are working and sharing the load um, with us. And so we celebrate here at Epworth that we've taken Jethro's advice as well and have just started this past week gathering the 15 leaders um, who responded to starting small groups to begin the training um, so that the Bible studies won't be led only by the pastors um, with a room, but there will be 15 more folks with us um, to set these small groups in place so that we can all do the work together, so that we can all care for each other, so that we can all be in this journey together. For where there is shared joy, there is double joy, and where there is shared sorrow, there is half sorrow. And as we do this journey together, it's my prayer that we will be those disciples who come back, right? Because Jesus gave us time to practice um, before Jesus went away and the Holy Spirit came. And the disciples came back amazed at what they had seen and what had happened and all of the power and the joy that flew, flowed through them um, from Jesus' love, from the communion with the Holy Spirit. And that's the kind of excitement and beginning um, that we want to taste here and we want to bring to our community. Um, but we're in the very beginning stages of that and figuring it out. Centro de Vida and Pastor Efrain are not. This is very much a part of who they are and a part of the church. Um, and so Pastor Efrain has a word for us, si quiere venir para compartir, um, to share um, a little bit um, from his testimony and like John was saying of holding to joy um, through some hard times and then what God has brought about. Good morning everyone. I am very happy to be with all of you today. It is such a miracle that I'm here. In 2016, I was, I was, uh, I, I, I'm trying to think of the word. I was bit by 
a, t a deer tick and I got Lyme disease. Meningitis. I was in Johns Hopkins for three months. Poder hablar. They told me I would never be able to speak again. Eh, el, me afectó el balance. I, could, I did not have balance anymore. En, no puede, tuve problemas para el, mandar la, la señal de mi, de mi voz a, a, del cerebro. And the receptors in my brain no longer worked. Eh, pero en medio de todo eso, but in the midst of all of that, yo siempre me mantenía alegre. I was always happy. Eh, confiando. I always trusted. Y hay un texto en 1 Tesalonicenses 5, 16. There is a word in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16. Donde dice, está siempre gozoso. Where it says, está siempre gozoso. Always be joyous or cease. Yeah, y, y, y si estoy aquí. And, because, and if I'm here. Es porque ese gozo me ha mantenido con mucha fuerza. It is because that joy has maintained me alive. Y me da fuerzas. And it gives me strength. Cada día. Every day. Y sé que pronto todo esto va a pasar. And I know that someday all of this will pass. Y yo les motivo también a ustedes. And I motivate each and every one of you. Que si están pasando por alguna situación. That if you are going through a situation. No pierdan su fe. Do not lose hope. Sigan creyendo. Keep believing. Que, el, que Jesús that Jesus va a ser un milagro grande is going to do a miracle in your así como lo hizo Just en like mí how he did it in me. lo va a hacer también en ustedes he will do to you. Dios les bendiga God bless you. and so our call this morning is very simple Um, it is to root ourselves in a joy that goes beyond what is happening to us or around us, but es algo más importante. So when um, Pastor Efrain was talking with me, he was talking of knowing and holding on, realizing that there is something more important. And so we hold that at the center of who we are and whose we are so that we can live from there. Because I don't know about you, but the world has enough of really um, bitter, very tired, very sad people. We need more people filled with joy. And we friends, Christians, are given good news. And it's called good for a reason. So this coming week, there will be battles. We have raised them in joys and concerns. There will be things to struggle with. But do so from joy. Do so from the power of Christ within us. That is algo más importante. That is something that is more important and that will overcome. And then we will share our testimony as Pastor Efrain has shared with us. So our commitment this week is simple. Celebrate. Be joy-filled. Find a place. Um, whether it's bragging rights of something that you've really been working on or celebrating um, a game and a goal that's won, whatever it is, celebrate with one another and take joy and take strength in that. And so we turn um, to be sent out this week um, in the God's power within us. Because it is not our own. And, and we are here barely seen because it's just there's so much happiness and joyfulness at this table. And, and thanks to Arlise, who's not afraid to show up at 7.30 in the morning to play and create and share joy. 